Today's AM hustle is about showing up. Good morning, good morning. Morning for some of you is really hard. Just really, really, just to show up, just to try to. I don't, I'm wired differently. So when I talk about that, I have to come out of my head and get in your head because. I have no problem showing up. I have no problem looking like a fool, but many people do. And that's where your success is. When you show up, when you do things without regard of immediate benefit or without regard of embarrassment, because sometimes when you're doing something new, something different, the embarrassment factor can be high. I'm learning some new software programs that are kind of kicking my ass because they've changed everything up. So what I'm going to do is find some little British kid on YouTube, sit there and go through all of their tutorials and learn this new software. Just that's what I'm going to have to do. And many people don't want to suffer through that process of becoming successful. That's where the real success is. The success is not the end result. The success is going through all of the bullshit to get to the end result to help you with that. All right, so let's jump into it. Why is it hard for you to show up? Fear, embarrassment, um, craziness. Um, what is it? What, why is it so hard for you to show up? What, what, what is the big problem? What is the deal? So once again, reconditioning myself and going back in time in my time machine, one of the reasons that I didn't want to show up was fear. Big one. Fear of failure, fear of looking like a fool, fear of making the wrong decision, fear, 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 fear. I can tell you some of those fears are true. Most of them aren't. You just don't know which ones are going to be true in your particular case. So what you're going to have to do is go out there, put yourself out there and see what happens. This is a case of ignoring conventional wisdom. This is a case of looking different because there's a lot of conversations in my Facebook group and you can find the annotation or the link below the video to join. It's free. We're getting into some deep conversations about being business owners. Uh, there's a lot of, there's a nice investment thread that's going. And what I see is things that people were told like the 401k are, are the surest path to prosperity is to go to college, all that stuff is being exploded. It's not being challenged. Challenge is, here's a little finger poke. I'm going to challenge you. This stuff is being, ch -ch -ch boom, blown the fuck up, completely blown up. And it's really amazing how that happens when rigorous intellectual thought is applied to it. it it's kind of crazy because People will show up for bullshit, but they will not show up for results. And what I mean by that is on my page, I'm doing a lot of experimenting with Facebook parking, not my page, but my personal page. I am doing stuff to see what the Facebook recommend engine will do to people. And there's a certain posts that I put up, the same people consistently come, which says Facebook is like, hey, you were part of this conversation last time. We're going to make sure you be part of it again. Now, I'll post something that's relevant, full of substance. Facebook recommendation engine, mm, not so much. We don't like that. We like fuckery. And that's really, really interesting. There are certain people who come to have what I call bullshit arguments that go nowhere. I mean, I'm sitting there waiting for stuff to process, and I'm playing with these fools. And it's just really, really interesting how invested people will become in something that they can't solve because it's easy. So that's what I'm saying about showing up for fuckery. Now, I showed up one time, and this is what really set the stage. It was the end of the first year. We did really, really well in the storage auction business. But both of us had bills out the ass. So there was profit, but it was sucked up by bills. You know the feeling. I'm quite sure some of you are right there right now. I had... 
$28 in my pocket, full tank of gas in a, in a house full of food. You know, the refrigerator was full. So I had gas, food. I was good. You know, the, the heat was on. You know, I was good. Every, you know, the bills. Just a long story short, when you become self-employed, you should get in the habit of prepaying your bills. So sometimes I would like prepay my electric bill like three and four months. Ahead. You know, let's put it this way. I was good if I didn't earn any money for a good two or three months, just based on the fact that I prepaid bills, prepaid electric, prepaid cable. But I had $28 in a full tank of gas. I knew I could hustle up something. It was around Christmas time, about three days before Christmas. And we we had units and, you know, it was just kind of slowed down. The flea market slowed down. And then there was all these auctions. And I said, well, I'm going to go. And my partner's like, why? You have no money. And I was like, well, why not? Simply, why not? First year, right? First year in the business. So I go out and I go to the store. store, store and I was just curious because it was so addicting. You never knew what you were going to see. There was It was just so much fun. I was just going for pure entertainment value. So I get there to the first auction. There's four people. And I was like, oh, they'll be here. They'll be here soon. Nope. Four people. It was like six rooms. Eh, wasn't really interested in anything. Stuff was going not dirt cheap. It was going gravel cheap. It, you know, gravel is under the dirt level. And then you get to the slate and the volcanic uh, rock and stuff. It was just, it was going deep. I was like, hmm, this is interesting. And we go on and on. And it's a full day. Lots of units. I mean, when I started buying, I was getting units for a dollar. I was getting units for five dollars. I ran out of locks. I was making deals. I was like borrowing locks off people because I spent all my money. And then it got to the point where when no one was bid, I was like, like, if you give me 30 days, I'll take it and clean it out. Sold to that guy right there who's crazy. I got damn near 30 units for $28. 10 by 20 is full from the ruler to the two. So when I, I call up my partner at the end of the day, because it was just so surreal. And I was like, you will not guess what happened. And then he was like, well, what happened? I was like, I got 30 something units. She said, stop lying. No, no, nobody showed up. There was nobody. And then I talked to one of the managers and the manager was like, oh yeah, this time of year, no one shows up. It's Christmas or sales. I was like, really? For real, for real. And that became a very integral part of a strategy that I knew what was going to happen. Because, you know, for those of you in the store shops business, it may have completely changed with the shows, maybe not. But typically, a lot of storage auction people go dead after Thanksgiving. It's just nothing's happening. So they stop buying. So stuff, supply and demand, it's like really, really cheap. I learned that lesson that was extremely profitable because when tax season came and everybody was flush and all these new people were coming out like big Willie style, like Jerry, I'll put a G on it. And then all of a sudden I was just, I'm just sitting back. I got all these units and we were able to sell through that first tax season without having to invest in that extravagantly over the top price inventory because I showed up. There are many of you who have something you're doing, something you're working on, but you're afraid to show up because you don't know what the results. Uh, well, I'm here to tell you, try it. <laughs> Just try it. Just go out there and try it. You know, if it fails, okay, it fails, but at least try it. Sometimes you win for just showing up. Another time, this was when before the storage auction thing, but I think the storage auction lesson was more it was deeply etched on my brain because it was so profitable. It was so real. It was so just there. I remember there was this sales meeting I had to go to and I had canceled meetings. The person I was trying to sell the furniture to had canceled meetings and it just really was just felt dead. You know, there, there was no fizzle. There was no pop in the deal. Just felt, yeah, this circuit is going to be, it's on life support right now, but it's going to, yeah, we're going to be like the time of death. That, that's coming. And I call up the guy and I was like, hey, uh, we can meet Thursday. And he's like, no, 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 we can't. I got this going on, this going on. And something happened. 
then I call back and he was fired or something. He either got fired or transferred. I'm not sure. And then I'm speaking to this person, never spoke before. So essentially this thing starts all over again. I go in and then I'm listening to Brian Tracy on the way over there. Just he's not even talking about. It. I'm just like, I got so relaxed because I didn't really care. I really, really didn't care. I was like, okay, there's no reason to be stressed out. I'm not going to go in there crawling on my knees. I'm just going to walk in there. I'm going to get the best presentation that I can, and I'm going to have a great day. This is what I'm telling myself. I'm driving. I get there. I, I meet the receptionist, go in. There's this lady, very nice. We sit down and talk, and she's on the phone, and she's like, come in, and she's on the phone doing all the little stuff and everything. So I pull out what I have to present. She's talking on the phone. She's looking at me. She's like, thanks for being so understanding. Oh, no problem. I'm in a good mood. I'm in a happy place. I got my happy going on. I'm just sitting there, right? I'm sitting there doodling on the pad while she's doing her thing. It's like drawing stuff, uh, skylines, birds, and stuff. Because you know, she's just, I mean, it's literally, she's on the phone for about 40 minutes. Then she gets off the phone. She's like, I am so sorry about that. We had an internal crisis. It couldn't be avoided. Uh, I'm new here. There's all of this stuff that's going on. And then she's like, so what do you have for me? And, you know, once again, I didn't care. So what I did was pre present the most expensive package in terms of presentation that I could. I was like, well, I'm just swinging for the fences here. I was like, okay, well, this is what you can do. And I also gave her the cheap package. I presented the first one. I said, all right, this is what you're going to do. We're going to knock out these uh, conference rooms, your reception area. Then we're going to go refurb on the training area. So it'll look new so your, your employees won't feel slighted like they're getting junk. I mean, they won't know that it's not new, but you'll be paying used price. So I gave all these combinations and stuff, and she's like, wow. And, you know, I didn't know what that meant. And she's like, this is the first thing today that's easy. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? She said, we're going to go with the, this package because part of our internal crisis is we need to enhance our corporate image. And I've been giving complete carte blanche to do what I want in this location because it wasn't being handled properly. So she bought the most expensive thing I offered. And I, I just showed up. I just showed up. Thought, didn't really care. And I'm sitting there in my car like, what the hell just happened? Oh, well, little did I know what I was doing was I had reframed my thought process. I had changed my energy and she was in a state of crisis. And I came in with my calm, my, ha my happy. I came in with my happy. I wasn't pressed. I wasn't tripping. And boom, one of the biggest deals I got didn't even work that hard. Just showed up. You know, thought it was dead. Thought it was on, you know, life support. Doop. It didn't happen. Sucker re resurrected, walked out the hospital. It was doing the dance on the lawn. I was like, oh. Also, uh, another time of showing up, and this was years and years ago. This was this was this was before online dating and hooking up became the norm. I was a member of this writing group, and this girl in the group, she lived in those states. All right, this is a list, sir. It's not like it is today. With all these pictures and stuff. No, you don't know who you're talking to. People got these little weird avatars. And she's like, I got a friend in Atlanta. And I just think, based on the things that you write, you two would just make a wonderful pair. And I'm like, really? <laughs> really? Oh, Lord. And I was like, no, no. And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's cool. I'm good. I'm good. Because, you know, back then, the hookups were usually not the best so she keeps on me if this goes on for weeks and i say all right i'll meet her i'll meet her and this once again like i didn't even ask for a picture i was like you know what i'm not even gonna worry about it so we get on the phone we talk she's got this really nice voice and i was just like uh oh she's gonna be a big one <laughs> she's gonna be huge right because i mean she had that lovely voice that just pulled you in you know the voice that I, I, I assume crazy stuff. So I was like, man, she sounds like she makes great biscuits. And I told her that, right? And she started laughing. And I was like, oh, this is going to be interesting. So we set up a spot to meet at Piccadilly on Old National, Old Nat back in the day. And I get there, right? I get there early. 
I'm just sitting there. Now, once again, this is before, you know, all the stuff with the cell phones. I've, you know, when you go somewhere and just sit, you usually sit or talk to someone. I'm sitting there talking to this couple and everything. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm meeting someone. Someone hooked me up and they're like, uh oh. <laughs> We're like, and then the wait staff and the, the uh, hostess, she was like, mm, that could be real interesting. Um, it was funny. And then this girl comes in who's banging just in a business suit, big calves, high heels. I'm like, mm, that's nice. And I was sitting there like, I'm not going to say anything to her because I'll be talking to her, right? Then the girl I'm supposed to meet you walk in. That's just going to be really, really jacked up. Well, she comes in and she's walking and she's got that tentative walk like she's looking for somebody. And then the hostess was like, hey, may I help you? She's like, yeah, I'm supposed to meet somebody. And she said, oh, that's funny. This guy's got like a blind date. And she said, so do I. And then she turned around and I was like, for real? Really? Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. We're yeah, we're, we're hooking up, and um, we we hung out for about two years. <laughs> Just showed up. Thought it was a so. What I'm saying is, the real problem isn't showing up. The real problem is taking chance and having courage. It's a courage thing. It's not. It's a. It's a big courage thing because we are taught that you should just be fine. I heard something today that. Someone was saying that if you know you fail, then that's a good sign of who you're going to be. I think when you fail, that's a good sign of where you are at that moment because I have failed massively. Just, I mean, I look back at some of the stuff that went down and I'm just like, Ooh, you survived that, dude. Your kung fu, your kung fu's tough now. And it's just, uh, it's crazy you will have these moments of things going bad. You will feel bad. But I can tell you that if you continue to go forward, if you continue to keep pushing and you continue to take chances and calculate the chances, I mean, okay, what's the worst that could happen with me going to meet someone at Piccadilly? I don't like them. Okay. That's not earth shattering. What's the worst that can happen with me going on the sales call that I thought was dead with a positive attitude? I don't get it. I mean, and what's the worst with me going out with $28 to storage auctions? Woo, I won't get anything. So when you look at what can go wrong from an honest standpoint, and if it's not going to take your life, it's not going to leave you broke, it's not going to harm you, what's the problem? Many people have a problem with taking chances. Uh, I will speak to the YouTube deal. In 2009, when I started this channel, I tried to bring a lot of people along with me. And I was like, I don't want to do YouTube. Mm -mm, I don't want to do YouTube. That's, mm, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. And no, they just didn't want to do it. Then maybe five years into it, all of a sudden, people in my inbox, hey, could you come to the house? Could you do like, YouTube class? I was like, no, I'm busy as hell right now. No, I don't have the time. And if I do, I'm going to charge you because what you're going to do is take advantage of the friendship. And some of those people who reached out to me, since you know i respected myself and my abilities and my talent because i know what the fuck i'm doing here they don't talk to me anymore wasn't on wasn't on the team in the beginning wouldn't show up didn't want to look into it didn't want to explore it didn't want to do nothing but all of a sudden i was supposed to just jump and be there and do all this stuff and pour all of my knowledge into their empty heads for nothing except good boy. Get the fuck out of here. And that's one of the things that, you know, I want you to be different. Because when you start showing up, some other things are going to happen. You're going to start getting more of everything in your life by just consistently showing up. Let's just say you show up and you're horrible. You're terrible. You used to be a really bad salesperson. I'm going to show up and just fuck up the presentation. Just, oh, it was horrible. And I remember one time, this guy who was a salesman, he said, okay, let me tell you what you did wrong. This, 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 this. And this is after he said, no, I'm not buying shit from you. He sat down with me. He's like, okay, you need to do this. You need to do this. Uh, you didn't have to tell me that that was not going to work that way. And just, boom, just told me everything. And I was just like, well, thanks. My feelings are hurt. Let me pick my face and my heart up off of the floor. Because, I mean, he he didn't like 
rip into me like the Renecrate sales meetings. Oh, no, no, no. Those were kind of like combat military rip ins. But he just said some choice words and I had to go, damn, it's true. It's just true. And over time, if you keep showing up, you're just going to get better and better and better and better. And the first thing is to get past that awkward, crazy, uncomfortable. It's going to be there for a few days, weeks, months, or years, depending on what you're doing. But once you get past it, you just one day you wake up. I mean, I start walking in the sales presentations talking smack. It was just like playing games. It became fun. It's like, I've been talking to you, but you're the guy that makes the decision. Now, aren't you? And at least sell to because this guy may like me, but he cannot pull the trigger on the deal. And that's a Essentially, there's some confusion about my consulting services, and I thought I would make a short video to give you an idea of what's going on. Business consulting, business coaching, what I can do for you and you and you and you. Because many people are coming in and they have some expectations that I messed up and put those expectations in your head. So I'm going to reach in your head and rattle it around and pull them out and just throw them away like they're gone. Number one. Not doing any eBay consulting. I don't know. People keep saying, hey, you know, e I hate fucking eBay, okay? I fucking hate eBay. I, eBay. Why would I consult? Why would I even? No, it makes no sense. Amazon consulting. No, I don't do Amazon consulting. There's tons of people who do eBay coaching, Amazon coaching. I'm not one of them. I'm the guy that believes in having your own website. I'm the guy that believes in creating and using internet assets to build your stuff. Not using someone else's because I think even in the beginning, they're very good and they make you money. But at some point, they bite you in the ass. So at some point, if you're going to do this thing, you must have your own internet properties. At some point, you have to have it. So why not do that first? And if you still feel the urge, that little scratch to go... Do the third-party platform, do it, but work on your own stuff. So just get that clear. I don't fuck with eBay. I don't mess around with Amazon. And what do I do? I am a strategist. I am a growth person. I do business development. Strategy, why are we doing what we're doing? And create a roadmap to get you from point A to point B. Because many people are so in their business that they can't see their business. It's like, I can't see the inside of this shirt because I got it on. It's kind of like where many of you are with your business. You're so invested in it and you're so close to it, you can't see it because you're in it. So with me, I'm like, hmm, okay, that's going on, that's going on, hold on, let me, oh yeah, you got that going on in there too. So that's where the strategy comes from because many small business owners have me syndrome. I can figure it out. I'm the smartest person. No, you can't figure it out. If I didn't come across Earl Nightingale's Lead the Field, Tony Robbins, Tommy Hopkins, Brian, Tr there were so many mentors that I picked up along the way because I couldn't figure it out. And there were many of you who like, I'm going to figure it out. And what you're going to run into is an information ceiling. The information that you have is only going to get you here. And that's it. You're not going any further. You're not building any further because it's just you. I want you to think about something, and I've said this, and no one has mentioned it in the comments since I've been doing YouTube. I started in the storage auction business with a partner from day one. It was never just me. There's always been additional elements to my business success. I had a partner. I had a very good partner who was an accountant. Okay, let's talk about that. So the business was properly structured, accounting, account set up, bank up from day one. That's one of the reasons that I was able to beat the Clampets and these other people. Because we had proper business protocols from day one. It makes a huge difference. Which means if you're just thinking you can do it by yourself, and there's some of you who are brilliant and you'll get it done by yourself, but the truth of the matter is most of you will not. That's reality. I'm not hating, just stating. So growth. You got a business that's going on, but there's this disconnect between the internet and certain people. Because I've said this before, you'll see someone, they're doing really great out there in the real world. 
but they can't really get it on the internet because the internet is a separate business, as I talked about in another video. Actually, that video is in Hustle University. Sorry about that. It's a different animal. It's different. It's like different section of the matrix with its own rules and regulations. So seriously, if you have a physical business and you have an internet business, you have two businesses. You don't have one. You have two. And if you treat them as two distinct businesses, you're going to get more traction. So business development. What are we going to do? What can we do? There's many times you want to start a business, and once you start getting feedback from the world, it will lead you to start another business or another service or another product. Many people get scared, and they'll be like, I'm going to do what I want to do because it's a dream. Versus taking the feedback, they ignore it, and they crash, and they just go boom. So I'm the guy that's like your guide, your shogun. I just show you the way. I can help you build up so many things. Now, this is something you really need to do before you contact me because many people, and that's why I'm doing this video, ask yourself, what kind of life do you want? Now, this is going to sound offensive, but if you are more concerned with creating some business processes to get some money and forget the whole lifestyle planning, I don't want to work with you. And this is why, because you'll build up that business and because you neglected the lifestyle planning, you're going to end up in the same place you were today emotionally. Even your business might be humming along, you might be making money. And just to put a dark moment on that, sometimes when people are fantastically wealthy from a fiscal standpoint, but their soul has poverty, their spirit is bankrupt. Sometimes these people kill themselves with millions of dollars in the bank. Just to let you know, that shit doesn't mean anything when your total life isn't together. So if you don't want to work on the lifestyle planning, because that's something I require. Like, what kind of life do you want? How do you want to live? What kind of hours you work? And people are like, well, I don't want that. I just want, you know, give me the stuff to make some money and then get shut the fuck up and get on. I don't want to work with you. If that's your thing, there's plenty of people out there. There's plenty of business consultants. Go find one, because I'm going to put you through that process. And it's a good process because I put myself through the process and that's the reason I don't have to deal with traffic. That's the reason I get to work at home. That's the reason in the middle of the day I go work out in the gym because I don't have to deal with certain things because it was all part of a plan, a lifestyle plan. I don't want to drive. I don't want to commute. So I created a business to serve those needs. Now, why is that important? It brings your stress level from it. I get in traffic. I don't get road rage. Because I'm not exposed to that. I'm not exposed to that all the time. So that's very, very important. Less stress, less wear and tear on your spirit and body. You can't replace this. It renews itself, but the less stress you put on it, and it's good, there's good stress and there's bad stress, but the less bad stress you put on it, the longer, the healthier you are. To me, that's incredibly important. Maybe not to you, but to me, it's incredibly important. So lifestyle planning. So another part of this is, where do you want to go? What kind of business? I mean, what do you, where do you want to go? What are you doing? Do you want to save well? I mean, what? What is your thing? What do you want to do? Because there are many people who's just like what I call a get money hustler. I just want to make some money because I have an immediate financial need, and I need to solve that problem now. I don't, follow, I don't want to work with you. Number one, you're broke. Number, just straight up, you're broke. You don't have any money to pay me, and you will work the shit out of me with no money. I did it a few times just to be charitable, and it was one of the worst experiences because when you are not only fiscally broke, your spirit may be broke. Money comes and goes, but it's hard to fix a broken spirit. It may never be fixed. I don't have those kind of powers, so you need to come to me with some kind of intact stuff, some things that you're working on. So, I can't do that. I just can't do that. It is just crazy. Now, how much money do you want to make? I ask people this all the time, and I, I get the who the who who the the outlook is is well, well the for, the standard answer is as much as possible. That's a bullshit answer. It's very hard to quantify as much as possible. I get you nowhere. You know, today, $30 will be as much as possible. And then your mind's like, okay, that's as much as possible. And then that's where you are. You need to have a number. You got to have a number. The number helps you tremendously. It forces you to focus.
forces you to look at things from a critical standpoint. Just, I want to make as much money as possible. Oh, I just hope to be happy. Oh, I hope to eat. Oh, I hope to have gas in my car. I'll just... You go nowhere with that. Nowhere. So, know where you're going. Have a number. And we'll just start from there. And also, let's talk about the process. It takes me time to figure out who you are, where you want to be. And that's part of the process because a lot of people email me and they want to talk and I'll see the email and I can just tell from that first email that this is a three, four, five, six, ten, twelve, twenty 12, 20 hour deal. If your life is fucked up and it's been fucked up for a while, it's not going to become unfucked in an hour. It's not happening. So you got to invest in yourself. If you don't want to invest in yourself, that's fine. But don't expect me to invest in you when you don't want to invest in you. And that's what a lot of people do. It's like, hey, let's go to lunch. Hey, let No. <laughs> we need to do something. We need to make some stuff happen. And uh, one of the beauties of having a lifestyle plan, I'm very blunt. I use profanity. I've been called unfucking professional. And I am unfucking professional. I have no desire to be fucking professional. I have a great desire to be me. And this is me. This is what you get. You meet me in the street. This is how I'm going to be. You, when business deals, I'm going to tell you the truth and I'm going to help you make more money. I'm going to help you have a better life. There is benefit because I'm not going to <sighs> blow smoke up your ass. Because if you're paying me, I'm going to tell you about yourself and we're going to do the things to make your business good. Which is another part. You need to have a business. You, you need to have a business. If you don't have a business, we are into business development planning, which takes hours. I cannot talk to you for 10 hours and get just a, a lunch. It's emotionally depleting because I want you to be successful. I'm rooting for you. I'm like, I got pom-poms. I'm cheering for you. And that's a long commitment. So with that, how do I get paid? Per hour. Per project, if you have a project, and this is once again where you need to tell me what you're trying to do. Because there are many people like, hey, you know, I want to do this, 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 this. And they'll give me what I call topical stuff. And only after the money's paid and the clock is really ticking that they start telling me the truth. They'll tell me what they think. It's like, well, hey, you know, this is. I have had people that I didn't really find out the secret thing from them until the third conversation because it's like this. It's like I put on my hat and I'm in the mind and I'm looking for stuff. Okay, okay. Oh, you you know, you do this? Well, let's do this and this and this. I have to find this stuff out to help you. And many people are not used to being freaking honest with themselves. It's just like, well, I want. Honest with that. Everything else is just hooty hoo. So that's part of the process. So you got to you gotta know. So get paid per hour, per project. And if you have a real business with real books and numbers, that means you have a, your accounts already set up. Or if I have to do it, I'll do an equity split. So say I imp improve your business X amount, then I get X amount with a monthly retainer. Because there are many people who's like, hey, let's do the equity thing. Then I'll work for a whole month. And this happened. I actually did this for someone. Worked for a whole month. And they didn't want to pay me. And it wasn't because I didn't do what I was supposed to do. I did it too well. Because when her husband saw how much more money, he had a problem. He's like, well, was it really worth that? I mean, you know, we'll just throw you maybe, you know, this is what the guy said to me. He said, 800 bucks. It was a $20,000 differential. And he's like, well, yeah, that's worth about 800 bucks. And I just pulled up my contract and said, well, if I go to court, I'm going to get all 20. And then I got paid what they were supposed to pay me. So that whole thing is, and that's when, and once again, in my business, I have learned that I must set expectations. So if we do something equity, it's going to be a contract. You need to get an attorney. You need to look at this stuff. And it'll be a simple contract. But that's the deal. If you want to do equity, there will be some money up front. Plus, there'll be a monthly retainer plus the equity per month. I go per month because when I was doing per quarter, that got a little dicey. So those are the three modes of how I get paid. Now, let's talk about life coaching. I get this all of the time. If you're on my email address, e-list, you see this. You know, I'll send out something and there's people who want life coaching and they want to be guinea pigs and all this other stuff, but they don't want to pay for it. I don't have to give away stuff for free anymore. 
2009, yes. 2010, a little bit. I don't have to do that anymore. And I'm not. <laughs> so if you want those services, fine. So, all right, as I always do, because if you stayed here this long, you're really interested, and you're not fucking a pussy. You know, fucking doesn't really bother you. Actually, you're probably going to be fucking tonight because you're a winner. So this is the deal.